Hello, back once again with uh, you know who, mm. and hello to you too. And oh uh, my goodness, it's been a really, really, absolutely hot April. Okay, it's uh, we're being boiled and sizzled and fried and you know roasted. Okay, and even this chap over here, you know, he seems to be a little bit hot under the collar. Oh yes, you know, it's I'm crushed. This is my crushed look, you know, because I'm crushed. I'm absolutely crushed. And who wouldn't be with the things that are happening nowadays, you know, all around us? You know, we celebrated Earth Day just recently, a couple of days ago. So, um, what are your thoughts on you know yeah. Earth Day in Patna? It's like a, playing a game of dodgeball, okay, right? You're dodging the potholes. You're dodging the plastic bags as though they are landmines. Okay, you're dodging the you know the, the the hot air being emitted by politicians. You know as they're on their you know um, campaign trail. The politicians, these guys, they are really responsible for the temperature going up. You know so many degrees. You know why? Yeah, because of the hot air. They have more hot air than you know. Volcano, you know, the ice caps will melt faster. Okay, then you know the your promise is being fulfilled by politicians at an election rally. Yeah, talking about politicians and hot air and empty promises and the rest of it. You know, uh, you heard about Sonam Wangchu. I mean, you know, the great guy from Ladakh. Well, I would say that um, Sonam has. Come to know a thing or two about betrayal. In the beginning, I sat for 21 days of hunger with water and salt, and then it was followed by women 10 days, youth 10 days, and now monks from monasteries of Ladakh. We are all trying to remind the government of India, especially the Home Ministry, of the promises they made to these fragile ecosystems of Ladakh and the indigenous people's cultures to safeguard them under the sixth schedule of Indian constitution. This was a promise made by the government and top agenda on their manifesto in last two elections which were won based on these and after that they backtracked and never kept the promise. Sonam had this you know massive trust in uh, you know Mr. Modi and the BJP you know he was like you know these guys are gonna do great things for Ladakh okay boom and you have Ladakh now it has been separated from Jammu and Kashmir and uh, that time Sonam was probably doing cartwheels, he was saying finally there's some action. Yeah, and he's like profuse in his praise of uh, the Prime Minister, you know, the Desh Kamahan Sevak Modi and all that. It's very touching. Yeah, you know, the big guy says, okay Sonam old chap, I'm putting you and your folks on my nice list. And I'm going to give you a big present very soon. And that is going to be a separate state under the sixth schedule where you environmentally conscious people can take care of the Himalayas, they can take care of your region and you can prosper. Now, Sonam, you know, he's an optimist. So um, he says, this is it guys, you know, statehood is coming. And so they're very happy. And then nothing, nada. Um, you know, it's like waiting for that one friend who always shows up late at a party, but you know, never really arrives. Okay, so you know, all this while, no, Sonam probably was sitting down there, scratching his head, saying like, uh, uh, "Did I miss the memo or something? Nothing's happening." Yeah, you better watch out, you know. My observation is this, that you better watch out for, you know, big guys in grey beards and, uh, you know, Santa suits. Because uh, they come along and make big promises. What you're actually left with is, you know, broken dreams and higher taxes. It's like, you know, the pizza delivery man saying that, okay, yeah, I'm giving this nice, delicious, hot pizza, but all the topping that you just 
want it okay and then uh, the pizza <laughs> doesn't arrive come on yeah what's up university is like full of this thing you know how the great vishwa guru is doing so much of you know great things and chamatkars and all that stuff and you are saying that he can't deliver a pizza but you know so now we should have seen it coming i mean in politics you know promises are like new year's resolutions they are made with good intentions but rarely follow through and of course sonam of course uh, believed in you know the good intentions of certain people this dude like he waited 5 whole years for the man in his santa suit to you know fulfill his promise he was waiting for his christmas gift 5 years i mean that's some serious patience But, you know sonam wangchuk is the gentleman he's a polite guy yeah so he sort of start sending gentle reminders you know to amit shah the home minister uh you know just dropping a casual hey remember that promise you know that kind of message hey remember your promise and uh, guess what all those reminders were like you know whispers uh, in a hurricane <laughs> whispers in a hurricane you know absolutely ignored no response no reply not even you know uh, sorry i'm a little bit busy now you know because uh, i've got to go under water to plant um, a peacock feather there okay right now i've got that important thing to do okay or like oh even like you know hang on like you know we're busy watching a netflix series right now okay we've really been watching or something like that no response no response yeah 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 yeah, yeah. i'm reminded of that you know that that, that abba song you know Ring, ring. Why don't you give me a call? Ah, Sonam Wangchok is a decent guy. You know, he he believes in decency. He thinks the best of others. You know, not like me. I mean, I'm certainly not a. It's a pity how decent people are fooled. Huh? It's a pity how decent people are fooled. Huh? But uh, you can't be fooled. I wouldn't. You know, I can. You know, I can smell bullshit from far away. So now Sonam's like, all right, all right. Okay, he says, oh, you don't listen to my whispers. I'll give them a taste of Mahatma Gandhi style. Okay, so he goes on this twenty-one day fast. Yeah, you know, he goes on this twenty-one day fast, twenty-one days with like nothing but like sort of water. That's all. Yeah, twenty-one days. You know, that's longer than most of my New Year resolutions last. You must have been thinking, you know. You know, Modi and Shah will have a change of heart. You know, they'll realize that I'm not just fasting for the fun of it. No, I'm not training for a fasting marathon over here. Okay, no, they'll just they they would be some kind of response, and he hoped that there would be some kind of response. Ah, huh? but no, nada, zilch, total silence from the big shots. And then twenty one days later, Sonam's like, um, all right. I'm done. Okay, can I get some acknowledgement now? But what does he get? Nothing. No yeah, politicians can say anything. And the politicians can say, "Hey, you know, like you know, that song." I beg your pardon. I never promised you a rose garden along with sunshine. There's got to be a little rain sometimes. Yeah, no decency at all. You know, I mean, if you're gonna ghost someone, you know, at least have the decency to do it after the first date, right? You know, not after they've starved themselves like for three weeks, okay? And you were saying he can't deliver a pizza. They waited so long for their pizza delivery. You know, I bet even their patients, you know, started ordering takeout, okay? But Nope. Nothing. Nada. Zit. They decide to go on a hunger relay strike. You know, that's right. That's right. You know, they are passing the baton of hunger like it's an Olympic torch. This is what they're doing, you know. So here we are. Hmm? There's a 51st day when I'm recording this. Okay, 51st day of you know, a state which is taking turns 
at trying to draw the attention of some really blind and deaf people. 50 days, 51 days and you know, uh, uh, there are many of us here who can't last you know, 50 minutes without a snack. There is more, you know, uh, you're like, you know, you're Sonam Wangchuk, okay, you're trying to fight for other people's rights, okay. And now you've got some chaps who are trying to intimidate you. You know, it's like the, you know, the bullies in the school playground, you know, except that these guys, okay, they are grown-ups, you know, allegedly. So now these playground bullies, so they are coming on and they are saying like, you know, hey Sonam, okay, you better back down. So yesterday, a man came to me and handed over this uh, envelope. This envelope had nothing written on it. It was stapled and packed very well. I opened it and found this letter, which was an anonymous letter and says, I'll read you. Sir, the only purpose of this letter is to inform you, in case you aren't aware, that the bank account details for your institute has been taken by the anti-money laundering department recently from the banks. The same has happened in Mr. Kejriwal's case, in brackets. This wasn't supposed to be disclosed to you or anybody for that matter, but I felt the need and importance for you to know if at all you can do something before it's too late. Wishes and prayers and admirer. So, something interesting seems to be cooking up around me. Another gentleman came who introduced himself as an officer in one of the central agencies for investigation. I won't name the agency. He very much gave the name. And then finally, before leaving, he said something very important, which connects to this. He said, these days... You should take very good care of your health because of the fast. But not only that, you should take very good care of your safety and your life. And he gave examples. He said, anything can happen these days. You never know. You could be going home in the evenings or you could be traveling out of Ladakh and there could be accidents arranged and there is risk to your life. Now, I really am not afraid of dying. I think actually that could be one of the best things to happen to me and to happen to the nation, this country, where I feel people are sleeping and it could wake them out of their slumber if something happens to my life. Yeah, they're actually trying to tell him to shut up. But come on, Nana. Come on, you can't scare a guy whose last name is Wang Chuk, okay? It sounds like a martial arts move, you know, I mean, come on. You, you, you give the people of Ladakh and you give Sonam Wang Chuk, you know, a promise that you're not keeping? Yeah? I think, uh, you know, they've picked the wrong guy. Okay, you make hollow promise to somebody called Wang Chuk, okay? And then you better expect him to come knocking <laughs> or hunger striking. Yeah, that's it. And the chap is not going to back down. Not going to back down. That's the interesting part of it. I think that we've gone on for quite a long time now and uh, it's time to wind up the show. Don't you think? That's my observation for today. Ladakh's Hunger Games with a dash of political drama and some mountain mischief. Now, who needs Netflix when you've got Ladakh's real life series? You know, the state of no state. Yeah, so you're off and you go and get a drink of water, okay, before you get dehydrated, okay? Yeah. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you for listening to my stuff. <laughs>